creative minds, this is Aisha. Welcome back to my channel. I've got a really fun project I'm working on today. Because I'm always on this crazy, busy mom schedule, I don't always have time to commit to a painting. But creating wall art paintings is hands down what I love doing the most. First things first, I'm getting my paints ready by making a mixture of paint and blood Floetrol. This is going to thin my paint and make it flow better without compromising the color. Some people like sifting their Floetrol in a strainer because sometimes it comes out a little clumpy, but I'm never too particular about that. My main thing is to mix the paint really, really well and make sure that it has a really nice flowing consistency. Along with the flow trowel, I'm adding a little bit of water to help thin it down even further. When I'm doing a paint pour, mixing is always what takes up most of the time. And it's also the least fun part. But it's the most important part because mixing the paints really well will ensure a much nicer painting in the end. I went ahead and prepared several colors in cups the same way and I start pouring in the different colors. First I start off with white as my base and just add all the different colors in there. There's really no method, just adding the different colors in one by one. Some people like doing a pattern, some people like pouring it you know, in a different way a higher pour or a lower pour, or they'll go in a circular motion. I'm just simply pouring in the paints one by one. And since I'm working with a fairly large canvas, I've prepared several cups like this. Now the fun starts. I'm pouring in very slowly and I'm moving in a circular motion. This is called the swirl pour technique or the tree ring pour technique. And like the beginnings of most paintings, it starts off looking like a gloppy, confused mess, but I promise you, the beauty will come. I didn't want my swirl to be centered, so I did start off a little bit on the side, and my paint starts falling off the edge a little bit. It's really hard to control where exactly the paint goes, but that's half the fun of doing a paint pour, is you don't really know what you're going to end up with. As I continue moving the canvas around, I really start seeing the colors pop out and all the different layers of the swirls. I'm using heavy body acrylic paints because I love the way that their colors turn out. They're also a lot more archival, so if you're looking to keep a piece that's going to last you a while, then using high quality paints is a must. This was a large canvas, so there was quite a bit of walking around and maneuvering. Now, I did want some negative space on my canvas, so I added black around the edges. And I wasn't exactly sure where I was going to go with it, but I just knew in my head that I still wanted some of the black showing. And I never like keeping a blank canvas with no paint on it. That's why I went ahead and added black paint. Add a little bit of gold or I think it's actually bronze left over and I never like wasting paint and always have trouble storing it properly. So I thought I would go in and just um, highlight a little bit of the circles. Maybe go for a little bit of the geode look which is really popular nowadays. I think it was closer to four or five days this painting took to dry. It was a lot of paint and it was a pretty massive canvas. 
and it did stay on that floor for all those days because it doesn't even stay completely flat to dry which means of course Zum Zum, my cat, stepped in it and I was able to somehow touch it up and salvage it so let's see if you guys can spot where my cat stepped in the painting. I wanted to embellish my painting with some writing using this really cool Mona Lisa metallic leaf pen that I found on Amazon. I prepared my canvas with straight lines to write on because I can't write straight for the life of me. And I'm also cutting up my metal leaf um, sheets into smaller workable pieces. Now working with gold leaf, I understand most people use some kind of brush to paint the adhesive on with, but I found this adhesive pen for metal leaf on Amazon and I thought it was such a cool discovery. I haven't seen it in any of the art or craft stores around my area, so I was really excited to use this. I found that the light coming from the window really helped me see the words because it does come out completely clear. It does dry super fast so I was really quick in getting the metal on and gently pressing down on it. don't want to like push down too hard and end up skewing the letters. And I take a brush that I specifically keep for metal leaf because it does get sticky and it's slowly started brushing off the excess. Those little extra pieces that I'm taking off, I absolutely do not throw those away. Those are still good. You can use them again. Metal leaf is so thin that no matter how much of it you layer on, it still goes on pretty flat. So if you've got these little chunks or small pieces, you can still put them on and it'll still look really, really beautiful. Plus, gold leaf is not exactly cheap, so you don't want to waste any of it. I usually keep a little jar that I collect mine in. I found that there were some gaps in my writing, so I did a little touch up by adding some more of the adhesive and just going over it with the leftover scraps of gold leaf. As I continued writing on the canvas, I found that I was becoming more and more proficient at using the pen and uh, not getting as many gaps in my writing. I did cover the entire canvas in writing, so I got pretty good practice. I started off using gloves on this project, but some at some point I got sick and tired of them. They were just getting in my way. And I felt that it I could still work with the gold leaf with just my bare hands as long as I didn't have any moisture on my fingers. I'm so worried sometimes of ripping a nice new sheet of gold leaf, but really it's not a big deal if it does end up ripping. This painting actually sold at an art auction for a charity, so I was happy that it went for a good cause.
I love the way this painting turned out. I enjoyed it in my living room for a while before I had to part with it. If you guys enjoyed this project as much as I did, please subscribe to my channel and join me on my other projects. And as always, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye!